this video we're going to talk a little bit about Birkhoff's postulates for Euclidean geometry. Now, Euclid's original postulates were uh, for a very synthetic approach. They didn't rely on knowing much about the properties of real numbers, only natural numbers. And Hilbert's postulates that we talked about in the previous video are a more rigorous version of the same thing. But Birkhoff took a completely different approach on his postulates. In his postulates, he has some undefined terms, not quite as many as Hilbert had. His undefined terms are point and line, line being a set, identified as being a set of points, which is kind of really a, a postulate there. Uh, distance, that the distance between any two points A and B is a non-negative real number, D of AB, such that the distance from A to B is the same as the distance from B to A. And an angle is formed by three ordered points, A, O, B, A not equal to O, B not equal to O, such that, um, and it's denoted as, you know, angle A, O, B, such that the measure of angle A, O, B is a real number modulo 2 pi. All right, so he's basically, basically postulating that there is an angle measure and a distance measure in existence, basically. Then he has some definitions here. Between, if A, B, and C are distinct points, we say that B is between points A and C, A written as A dash B dash C, if and only if the distance from A to B plus the distance from B to C equals the distance from A to C. Now, Notice that he defines between, whereas Hilbert left that as an undefined term and had postulates that dealt with between. In Birkhoff's approach, he will be able to prove Hilbert's postulates for betweenness as actually as, as not as postulates, but as propositions. He talks about a line segment that points A and C together with all points B between A and C form the line segment AC. Notice the notation for the line segment A. C with the bar over it. A half line, an endpoint. The half line M prime with endpoint O is defined by points O and A in the line M, um, where A is not O, as um, the set of all points A prime of M such that O is not between A and A prime. So he's here he's able to use betweenness to get to that. Parallel, if two distinct lines have no points in common, then they are parallel. A line is always regarded as being parallel to itself. A straight angle, a right angle, and perpendicular. Two half lines M, N through O are said to form a straight angle if the measure uh, uh, M, O, N is pi to half lines m and n through o are said to form a right angle if the measure of m o n is uh, plus or minus pi over 2, in which case we say that m is perpendicular to n. He's going to define triangle vertices and degenerate triangle. If a, b, and c are three distinct points, the th three segments, line segments a, b, b, c, and c, a are said to form a triangle with sides segment a, b, and line segment b, c, and line segment c, a and vertices A, B, and C. If A, B, and C are collinear, then triangle A, B, C is said to be degenerate. Similar and congruent, any two geometric figures are similar if there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points of the figure such that all corresponding distance are in proportion and corresponding angles have equal measure, except perhaps for their sign. Any two geometric figures are congruent if they are similar with a constant of proportionality k equals 1. So he's, he's defining what's meant by uh, similar and congruent. And with that set up, he only, actually only has four postulates. Now notice these all depend on really knowing what the properties of the real numbers are. So postulate 1 says there's a postulate of line measure. Okay. The points A and B up to whatever of a line can be put into a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers so that um, 
the uh, XB minus XA is the distance from A to B. In other words, this is um, this should be so the correspondence is X, which is a function, and so this is X of B. That's what this means, and this is X of of A is what that should say. It says if we, we take these coordinates, the difference in them is the distance between them for all points A and B. The point line postulate, one and only one line contains any two distinct points P and Q. I think that's extremely like uh, a postulate that Hilbert had. The postulate of angle measure The half lines are raised L, M, N, through N, and so on through any point O can be put into one, one correspondence with the real numbers A modulo 2 pi, so that if A and B are points other than O of L and M, respectively, the difference okay, is, and again, this is like A is like a function here, where we're taking A of the M and then A of the L uh, is given by the difference. Uh, modulo 2 pi of the numbers associated with lines L and M, and that's the measure of the angle. And then we have a postulate of similarity. If in two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, and for some constant uh, k, positive constant k, the distance from a prime to b prime is k times d, the distance from a to b, distance from a prime to c prime is k times distance to a to c, and the measure of angle a prime, b prime, c prime uh, plus is equal to plus or minus the measure of uh, a, b, c, okay, then we also have the other sides are proportional and the other angles are congruent. So what this is basically, this is a side angle side similarity. Okay. So what we're going to do in unified geometry, in our postulates for unified geometry, we're mostly going to take postulates that are very similar to Hilbert's prosody. Let's we're going to do something similar to these, and uh, not those, and maybe some of these, and then we're going to keep something very similar to these a uh, couple of these postulates of um, Birkhoff's as set as well, and kind of put those together. Uh, that doesn't actually make them all uh, completely independent, but it makes for a mostly uh, synthetic way of looking at it but partially analytic. So the synthetic way is the way of Hilbert and, and uh, Euclid, and the analytic way is the way from these things here of Birkhoff. So in Birkhoff's analytic way, he has assuming the uh, properties of the real numbers, and then you get this idea that we have one-to-one -one correspondence between points on the line and real numbers and angle measures and real numbers. So what we can do is we can get um, Basically, we can get uh, the properties of the real numbers end up telling us something about the geometry. Next video, we'll talk about at least the incident postulates that we're going to use in my course.